Well, uh, hello everybody. It's uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, and I suppose it was a very long day for everyone. So um, I'm very grateful that you are all here with us. Uh, it's, for us, it's hard to see how many are in the audience, but it's quite uh, many, so uh, we're happy to have you all here with us. Um, we uh, just uh, sat down and said, how are we going to do this, uh, this half an hour that we have together? And uh, we decided we're going to do it very lively. And um, uh, with, uh, with respect to liveliness, we would like to intro, uh, introduce you as well. And um, it would be very, very nice if you could uh, also uh, bring in some questions. Questions to our topic. And um, let me start right away. Um, what we're going to talk about today before I present these uh, gentlemen is we want to know if sustainable tourism has also an economic potential. Um, I think everyone here has uh, had the experience in a hotel. You come into the bathroom and everything is nice and fine. And you will find a little card or maybe a little uh, badge saying, uh, please remember our environment. and." Uh, if you're using a towel, make sure if you really want uh, to um, get it washed or maybe you want to reuse it. And if you reuse it, uh, please put it somewhere and then we will, uh, have, uh, we will save water, we will save energy, detergent and so on. So um, if, uh, if you are like me and you look at this uh, little card and you, you think, uh, okay, I can see the point. I mean, we're saving water and we're saving energy at home. I'm, I'm not washing my uh, towels every day. Uh, but there is, of course, a huge economic benefit to the hotelier because uh, he is saving water and energy and so on. So um, you are probably thinking, was this really a sustainable idea or was it more an economic-oriented idea? So in this direction, we are thinking, is uh, sustainable tourism something where you can uh, uh, save money? Is it uh, something where you can always save money? Because towel is very simple, but when it comes uh, to more complex issues, then the economic situation can be very different. And we are going to talk today um, with two gentlemen. On uh, my left side, I have Graham Jackson. He's head of partnerships of the Travel Foundation. And on my right side, I have Stuart Moore. He is the CEO of EC3 Global from Australia. And um, I would ask you, please, to introduce yourself, to introduce your companies. And once we've done that, we're going to dive into the subject. So it's okay for you? That's fine. Yeah. Stuart, will, do you want to go ahead? Or Graham? Stuart, please. Okay, so it's my absolute pleasure to be here uh, this afternoon. And I take my hats off you to having the energy to be at the last session today, the graveyard shift. Um, I'm the CEO for EarthCheck, uh, EC3 Global. Uh, we're an international environmental benchmarking and certification program that now works in over 80 countries worldwide. Um, we have the best science in terms of benchmarking and baselines. And part of the discussion today is sharing with you some of the, the stories and the outcomes of the clients that I work with, all of which have different pathways. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Graham Jackson from the Travel Foundation. We're a UK-based charity that works with the tourism industry to help them make their products more sustainable. Um, so we work with major tour operators, destinations, uh, ground agents, travel agents, you name it, we help them. Excellent. I, I have mentioned this example with the towels. Um, I believe there are better examples. Do you know what are the best investments in sustainability that bring out big bucks? Um, I'm going to throw some curved balls, which you do on, a, on an afternoon like this. So can I just give you some context before we open up the discussion, and particularly in the discussion about what, what's investment and what's return in sustainability? So the first thing is we are now 10 years into the green century. It mightn't feel like it, but ladies and gentlemen, we're here. The second part of it is that ultimately sustainability is no longer an option if it ever was one. It's now become embedded as a core part of business practice. And it's something that some sectors are doing specifically very well. Um, perhaps, and we'll have a look at tourism this afternoon in terms of our health check. And lastly, 
in that context. That we used to talk about uh, the impact that business was having on the environment, but now we talk about the impact that the environment is having on business. There's a substantial change in the context of discussion of sustainability, and particularly with the issues about resilience and about working of communities and about particularly understanding the cost of resources and how that needs to be factored into your business planning. So that's why when we start talking about simple things like um, picking up towels, that is one part of a bigger equation, which is about the hotel right across from its landscaping, through its kitchens and ware washing, uh, to working with its suppliers. Every bit of that has to be part of the answer. But, but if, uh, is it good that towels are being picked up? Tick. Yes, it is. But there's a bigger equation. And that equation has to be taken right across the supply chain. And in a broad sense, and you heard it before, it has to be also applied to the community which you operate because we are part of one outcome and one destination. And will you really uh, get money out of this? I mean, I, I want to provoke here and, and ask, can you really, uh, with sustainable tourism, with these uh, uh, along the value chain, the different actions, can you really... Um, see it only from an economic point and maybe convince a hotelier or a supplier uh, if you change this and that you're going to really win money or save money? So, so I look at it as a planning balance sheet and, and I think the big issue about sustainability, it, it's not taken up in a profit and loss sheet and it's not taken up in a balance sheet. So you might be able to pick up things like operational efficiencies and gains in terms of water and waste, but you're not picking up things such as brand... Um, risk mitigation in the whole context of, of compliance and also brand protection. So, you know, the investment return is really not just about the, dollar, the bottom line, that's one part of it, it's really about how you're acting in that community for your staff, your shareholders, the suppliers in that food chain, and ultimately, um, at the end of the day, how you stand up and market and bring people back. So investment, to me, is really a broader basis than just the dollars, but they're an important part of it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask you, Graham, um, on the other side, are tourists willing to pay a, a price premium on sustainable products? Uh, I think that depends what, what we classify as sustainable products. Um, I think if you're talking about mainstream tourism, then really it's, I guess, as in many parts of uh, many other sectors, it's, it's more what customers expect from you. So, like they expect you to have created a, self, uh, a, a safe and healthy environment in which them to stay. They expect that the, the businesses that are taking them to, to these holiday destinations are actually thinking about their, their impacts when they're there. Um, no one wants to go and uh, sit on a beach covered in litter. Um, no one wants to be given an unfriendly welcome by the locals. Um, and of course, all these things can be addressed through sustainability. So um, I completely agree with Stuart that I think it's, it's about resilience in the broadest sense and it's really about making sure that uh, the products that you offer are, uh, are, are looking at their every, every impact um, in every different part of the, uh, of the, uh, the product is, is, really, is really just, uh, sorry I've lost my train of thought a little bit. <laughs> Um, it's so you can start off with profits, you can go into it um, looking for return on investment, but actually what's really going to be the motivator is when you start seeing um, happy customers. Happy customers? Happy yeah. customers. And that's all we need. That's all you want. Um, <laughs> Um, do you have any uh, uh, experience if there's a special group of, uh, of customers that are more willing uh, to, to, to pay for uh, sustainable products? Any, any experience here? Not especially. I think, um, going back to what I said before, it's more of an expectation on the customer's part that, that these things are taken care of. I mean, everyone is um, everyone's able to share their perspectives now very easily via the, uh, via the internet. So uh, if a company puts a foot wrong, uh, the customers are very quick to pick them up on it. So I, I think there are obviously more switched on consumers. There are people that go out searching for certificates, uh, certified properties. They want to know that the money they're spending is going into local communities and so on. Um, they may be willing to pay a price premium, perhaps they're uh, more affluent customers and perhaps they're picking specialist uh, businesses to go, out, to go out to these places that actually sell that product to them. Um, but I think we're starting to see that a lot more in mainstream now um, and, and really uh, a lot of companies are taking, uh, taking the, uh, the, the, the impetus to sort of educate their customers about um, why they should pick uh, this product over 
perhaps a competitor's product that doesn't have these sustainable credentials. So it's definitely a point of differentiation. Whether they're willing to actually pay more for it, I don't know. But they're certainly, uh, it's certainly another thing that you can talk to them about, and it might be another reason why they want to buy from you than, than a competitor. Okay, thank you. Well, Stuart, what about you? I mean, uh, many, uh, many, many people think that higher educated people uh, would uh, pay more for a sustainable holiday. Um, you have uh, richer people are, uh, are more inclined to pay for a sustainable holiday. Is it really uh, that easy to differentiate? No. I, I, I think the issue is, is the market's matured. The expectation is that people now want holidays that give them an experience. All markets want that. They want a hands-on experience, culturally delivered at the destination. They don't want to get sick. They want to drink fresh water. And they want to feel as though they're actually providing some um, feedback in, into the economy in which they're visiting. And I think that's all markets. Look, markets can be, can be differentiated by product. You might go ecotourism or you might go adventure. But I think the markets have matured. And I think it's an e expectation. The market's already moved. The market is now saying we demand more. And from the operator's perspective, they're looking at operators and saying, guys, the expectation is you should have been doing this for us anyway. That's what responsible business is. And, and I think we've been saying to operators for a long time now, people are going to come knocking and, they, and rightfully should ask that question. OK. We have been talking before we, we came on stage, we met and we uh, discussed a little bit uh, practical experiences. And we've been talking about different cultures. Um, how is uh, the European culture looking on, on sustainable tourism, uh, Australian culture, Asian? Is there something you would like to share <laughs> with, that we talked about? Um, we, we've just done an international white paper on water, which I think is the next major issue we need to address as a, as a society, not just an industry. And what we did was benchmarked uh, operational baselines for water use right across the world. Um, and what it was showing, some interesting things, Europe does particularly well, and that I guess shouldn't be that surprising. Mm -hmm. um, Asia does really bad uh, right across the continent, in fact, in terms of their water use. And what it's starting to look at is the whole nature of the pathways, that the, how the industry has developed and grown, and the opportunities for improvement. But I, I think the comment I made earlier on is that I've been so impressed uh, on the ability of the Asia-Pacific. The Asian countries get sustainability. They're really stepping up with their technology, they're putting into their business plans. Um, and I think the next wave of green growth and green technology is, is going to come out of the Asia-Pacific region. Um, I wish I could say the same for Australia. I think we're lagging. Um, and Europe has always been the benchmark, um, particularly the Scandinavian countries. And for those Americans in the room, I, I still think you're eight years behind the ball. <laughs> this might be the opening questions to the, to the audience. Is there, do we have already questions from the audience that you would like to address uh, to these two gentlemen? Hard for me to see. Do we, oh, we have a question there. Uh, well, sustainability, in, 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 there is another factor in sustainability, which is the community, where the hotel or whatever. So that uh, ecology and sustainability does not end at the gate of the hotel. So uh, the client in the hotel, they like to feel good that he's in an environment which is safe and uh, clean and the, the community is profiting from the money he's pumping, uh, pumping in, or the price he's paying. So how do you finance this? Is it a possibility to include this somewhere or another? Do you have a clue for that? Um, okay, yeah, I do. I, I think there are some excellent examples around the world. Um, Mexico is one place. New Zealand does this very well. Um, where it's about, you know, it's actually about having the three things that make all businesses tick. It's having a vision. You've got to have a vision, and particularly where that fits into you, the top-down process. That's a government having a vision. That's about leadership. And communities that have leadership are the ones that actually step up and can work with industry. Industry's role then is to do the bottom-up stuff. And, and I think the example, and if we use New Zealand as a good example there, had a very strong political commitment backed up by policies, industry stepped up to the mark with compliance, and the community were a core part of that. And Kaikoura in New Zealand is a fantastic example of a community which wasn't all about tourism, it was about, in fact, agriculture and, and marine-based activities, 
um, reduce their waste to landfill by 80%, water by 35%, because of all that coming together, I think it can be done. Yeah. I'd add to that, it's, it's absolutely about collaboration um, and public-private sector partnerships, and it, it could even be rival companies working together on a common issue, um, particularly with things like... Uh, with things like community, because the minute you step out of that hotel that's uh, got all the green certification and all that stuff, and you, 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 you step out, uh, out in, into the, uh, the community, if you're given an unfriendly welcome because those people aren't uh, benefiting anyway, then, then you've got a problem with your business. People aren't going to want to come back. Um, the Travel Foundation has actually been working with uh, a number of um, beach operators in uh, Sri Lanka. There's a, problem, uh, a lot of problems with hassle on the beach. So one of the things that we've been, uh, we've been doing with some uh, local partners is actually helping uh, to break down the barriers between those individuals uh, from local communities and the hotels, getting them working together, getting them trained up so they're able to actually offer a service to the guests. So, and in some cases, this has had some real impacts in terms of fences coming down between the beach and the hotel. Um, you know, things have got so bad in some uh, areas where tourists didn't dare to go on the beach. They've flown all this way. They're looking at the, you know, looking at the beach, and the hotel is advising them, just stay by the pool. It's, it, you're safer there. It's better. Um, now, you know, complete turnaround situation. These, these people are really benefiting. Um, the hotel seeing it as a very much an added value uh, to, to their guests. The guests can go back on the beach. So, you know, that, that, that's really a case in point of, the, the, of, of businesses taking quite a forward-thinking approach, not just saying, okay, we're going to close off and just control what we've got control over. We're actually saying, okay, well, what are the problems that we face beyond our borders, if you like, and, and, and really getting to, to grips with that and the, and the communities around them. Thank you. There is another question here. Yeah, it's actually two questions tied to two points. Ian Taylor, uh, Travel Weekly. Um, at the most basic level, if re resorts, uh, properties, uh, use less power and water, they're going to save money and it's better for the environment. So there's a, ba there's a basic economic case for it, isn't it? What's wrong with uh, proselytising that? There seems to be... Um, like no, one, no one has made the point yet in the, the session, so I'm a bit surprised at, at that. But also it takes investment. So can you talk about the kind of savings people, uh, the companies can, can make on doing that. And secondly, Graham, um, specifically for you, mm -hmm. I've yet to see any surveys sh showing evidence that people, uh, convincing evidence that people will pay more. Sometimes people express a willingness to pay more, but this often yeah. evaporates outside of the, the survey context. And yet the Travel Foundation is, is funded primarily by small contributions, 50p mm -hmm. or a pound, mm -hmm that holiday makers make when they buy a holiday. So could you say something about that and talk about the scope for developing that? Because surely that's a model that would see, could see millions of holiday makers contribute uh, towards sustain sustainability without it hitting them hard in the pocket. Definitely, yeah. So I'll just address your, your first uh, com uh, comment, and I absolutely agree, you know, um, that uh, uh, it's a way in for, for, for a lot of businesses with cost savings. You know, that's, that's, what make business, that's what makes businesses tick, the bottom line, of course. Uh, and if you can show how a, uh, a hotel can save thousands of pounds a year by doing something differently, by improving efficiencies, then uh, clearly you're gonna, they're going to start listening to you. Um, the point, going back to the point that Stuart made earlier, um, beyond that, uh, there's, there's a danger if you look at that, that, that short-term profit realising short-term profit from these things because all you're really doing is bringing your sort of baseline cost down. Now, what happens after a year you've saved £100,000 and the next year you've saved nothing, you haven't gone any further down? Well, if you've realised that as profit and taken it out of the business, then um, you've really got nowhere to go. If you reinvest that money, which is effectively, you know, a lot of this stuff can actually be done for, for free uh, by looking at the way you, you do things. Um, if you reinvest that, uh, and actually put that up as capital to invest in the next step, you can bring costs down further. And obviously that, that has a sort of uh, a snowball effect and, and can really help uh, businesses to become more resilient to rising utility prices, uh, etc. So, you know, there is a really compelling argument for that. And, and um, we're really, um, we're, we're still talking to a lot of businesses about cost savings initially because it gets them interested. But up beyond that, it's really about uh, uh, their, them having a, a longer term plan. Um, so that they're able to, to continue and, and be profitable for, for, a, for a long period of time. 
Um, the second point you made about um, how we're funded is quite right. Um, so I guess in a sense, yes, holiday makers are willing to pay more for sustainability because they choose to make a donation at the point of purchase. Um, I think that's definitely something uh, which is, uh, you know, which has obviously got the Child Foundation to point it's at today. Ten years, ten years. We celebrate our tenth anniversary this year, um, and uh, we've been, you know, we've had fantastic support from the industry uh, to get there and to, to help communicate to, to customers. But I think on the flip side, there's also no expectation uh, that uh, businesses are doing something about this. So uh, what we're finding is quite a lot of um, uh, our supporters are now actually choosing to build in. Uh, the cost, uh, a donation within the price of a holiday, so they can say to their customers, we really take this seriously as an issue. We want to be a sustainable business. We want to give you a sustainable experience. Uh, we recognise that um, our business depends on these destinations and we want to put something back into them. So within the cost of your holiday, we are making a donation to the Trial Foundation. And it's not just us. There's other organisations out there that are, that are doing these things. Um, and I think, you know, it does really sound like a powerful message that it's not, a, it's not an add-on, I suppose. Um, some choose to actually match fund their customer donations. So customer gives 50p and the company gives 50p. Again, that's kind of very much putting, putting the money where your mouth is and, and, and really, uh, um, you know, really does send that a message to customers that it's something you care about. I hope this answers the question. Thank you very much. Are there any further questions you would like to ask? Hey. Uh, I'm a yeah. fourth year uh, of a university student in, uh, in Wales, and uh, I've been told uh, well, by my senior lecturer, Brian Gart, that there's one example shining the most of all of them, and it's uh, way watching. It's just simple way watching. Uh, you mentioned, well, Mr. Moo mentioned uh, Kaikura, yeah. which is one of the most famous places where way watching is going on and can you be more specific of the potential whale watching as a sustainable tourism thank you um, whale watching was always a, a component of what happened in Kaikoura but, but effectively they became the champions in fact they were the local Maori people and and the whole idea was working with local champions and then using them as a pivot point to actually grow tourism in that economy so that that economy then had um, the ability to build on that with restaurants and shops and then everybody came along with the local authority, understood the need to actually have a sustainable outcome, so it was a destination based. So I guess the comment was all those little bits had to be built together and they were the bottom up, they're the essence of what's very special which is ecotourism and well watching. Uh, and the other element was how the whole community, including the Maori culture and, and development was able to be delivered. So. Um, that's just and that's that's their value proposition, but there'll be a lot of other places in the world that does do the same thing, have the same opportunity. Thank you very much. Well, we had uh, ten years of experience, a lot of experience here on stage. Um, I think uh, the the question is, we agree that sustainable tourism can really bring uh, back money to the company. The question is, why does it take so long to, for the industry to change? I think uh, uh, can, can I answer that? I think. Uh, one of, the, uh, one of the main things is, is knowing where to start. Um, a lot of people get the business case for sustainability. They know that they can save money. They know that it's a good thing to do. Um, but quite often it's actually, OK, well, we want to do this thing. How do we actually do it? Um, Travel Foundation has, you know, works with companies to help them do the doing. So they, they get it. I want to do it. Where do I start? So it's about giving them education, giving them tools, uh, and giving them support. Um, there's an example I'd like to give uh, from a project that's been happening over the last three years in Sri Lanka, uh, the Greening Sri Lanka Hotels project, uh, which we're, we, we work with uh, as a sort of European delivery partner for, for that project. Um, that project's been engaging with hotels, uh, many of them very, very, uh, growing very quickly. Uh, uh, Sri Lanka passed a million tourists last year for the first time. Um, so, you know, they're in a situation, there's a lot of new money coming into the country, they're building and building and building, um, but how to do that in a responsible way, how to do that in a sustainable way. Um, lots of independent businesses as well, you know, there's some big chains, but there's a lot of people setting up, perhaps in tourism for the first time, don't know necessarily where to start. So, uh, this project's actually has gone out and given them uh, education, given them awareness, uh, given them some tools and support and in audits, things like this, so they can actually start to, to work out where their impacts are, how they address those things. And it could be something as simple as, um, for example, 
uh, one, one hotel I, I know they visited uh, was uh, every time they wanted to get something for the, for the kitchen out of the cold storage, they would go and open the, open the door and take it out and bring it, oh, we need some tomatoes, open the door. You know, it's a very hot country, obviously, and every time you open that, uh, open that refrigerator, there's energy being wasted. So the guy said, well, why do, you, why do you do this? Why don't you just open once in the morning, once in the afternoon? Okay. We could do that. And, and, you know, the impact of that on that small hotel is, was, was quite immense in terms of their, their energy bills for the year. Suddenly, they're listening. What else can we do? What's next? <laughs> and I think, so there's partly education, helping where to start, but then uh, it's also about helping them to uh, make sure that sustainability is part of everyone's job. Not necessarily saying, okay, well, this is the sustainability person, but really everyone from the, the, the maid to the manager should really have something within their, their, their role uh, to, to try and take this forward. And it's quite addictive. When people start seeing the savings they're making or they, they, f they feel empowered to do something, that's when change really starts to happen. Excellent, excellent. We, we are about uh, to finish. I have a, a last question. Maybe it's a very difficult to answer, but um, I trust on your experience. Um, we have a, a new tourism country at the horizon. It's uh, Myanmar or Burma. Um, is there something you would recommend to this country with regard to sustainable tourism? They start to build up their infrastructure, the hotels and everything. Should they be thinking about something special right now before they build it and then have to redo it or change it? Yeah, we've had a doubt. And I think that the lesson which we've learned over a long period of time is it starts at the top. What's the vision? Vision you know, comes before strategy that comes before tactic and development. Vision is the most powerful thing any destination to do. And that's why you need to have a very strong master plan. You get your vision right, the rest of things will fall under it. If you go in haphazardly and go in with pilot projects, without thinking where you're going, you're going to end up in a very unsustainable destination. And you know, you can't have sustainable tourism in an unsustainable environment. So tourism has to learn to work with the other sectors, but it, does have, it really does mean you've got to have that master plan. And it's got to be very clear up front from day one. Excellent. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I enjoyed our five o'clock uh, session. I hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you enjoyed it too. Um, we had a wonderful uh, uh, day, and um, thank you. I thank everybody for being here. Thank you.